you can you can present something that's really challenging musically to the public and the public are fine with it Hey Matt. Hey Kev, you alright man? Yeah, all good, all good. So uh, today we've decided to have a chat. I mean, it, you know, it, we like talking about music, so we thought we'd have a, a you know, start having chats about some some albums that we've come across, some new stuff, some old stuff, just what we, we think of it. Not really a review, more just sort of two blokes discussion. rambling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. discussion. <laughs> so okay, um, first Black one. Black Midi. Yeah. Black Midi. There we go. They've got a new album out. Just came out a couple of weeks ago, last week, something like that. Yeah, um, yeah and it's called Cavalcade. Eight tracks. Um, now, uh, I'd, I'd say that they've been around for a little while. I know they're still quite a young band, but they've had one album out before this. This is their second album, is that right? That's right, yeah. yeah. And I have to say the first album kind of passed me by a little bit. I heard a lot about them, but I and I saw a few bits and bobs. Um but I never really sort of, it never really stuck with me. Um, but then they released a few videos, didn't they? Um, yeah. Uh, do you remember I sent you, I was, so we were sending each other the videos, weren't we? So yeah. Yeah. Just, so there's the, uh, the, the track called John L and a track called slow. And I have to say slow got me, man. That, that mm. really, really stuck with me. It's got a, you know, a really nice vibe. Now, how would you describe black midi, Matt? Well, um, somewhere between, it's a bit like that sort of new wavy uh, early 80s thing where there was lots of bands who were taking influence from um, sort of minimalist progressive music and like XTC, um, Talking Heads and that sort of discipline era Crimson. But they, they've sort of done something that's probably a bit more um, jazz rock with it. Yeah, um, I mean... I have to say on, on, you know, on the first listen through to this, th there was, I don't quite know how to describe it because it's a lot of this, the sounds that were a lot of, the, not necessarily the sounds, a lot of the chords, a lot of the, the progressions and stuff. I've sort of felt familiar to me. Um, yeah. It's, a, it's the Mavish new King Crimson thing, isn't it? It's this in there. Yeah. And ve um, very much King Crimson. And to be honest with the, the one that the, the thing that just kept popping into my mind was Adrian Ballou. Yeah, you know, the balloon. How he, yeah, you know, how he kind of like stepped over from like that talking heads kind of stuff into mm. this, into you know. Um, but there's something else as well. I don't know. I can't quite put my finger in it. There's there's something new um, going on that I found when they when they kind of hit their stride. I found it quite yeah, really cool, man. Really cool. Yeah, it's definitely not retro, is it? It's not like a you know someone taking those things and just carrying on with it. It's definitely something new going on. I mean, especially. I, think, I suppose it's that Scott Walker floaty thing as well. Yeah, there's a lot um, of that. Yeah, and the vocals, yeah. Yeah, because he's a really strong sort of um, Scott Walker, bit of Jeff Buckley, bit of that sort of really, really good singer. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the chord progressions are... Um, what's the last song on the album? Um, Ascending Forth. But it's got that amount of visionary bit halfway through. Yeah. Um and it's, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff. They, they tend to sort of lurch between sort of the ballady thing and then the sort of, sort of King Crimson Mahavishnu thing, Talking Heads thing as well. So, But the, the other thing I'd have to say is they're phenomenal musicians, aren't they? Uh, the drummer. I can't remember. What's the drummer's name? The drummer is just, yeah, amazing. I mean, he's, he's a remarkable drummer. What's the chap's name? We, Morgan, we Morgan Simpson, I want to say. Is that right? Yeah, uh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Uh, but he's a remarkable drummer. Yeah, I mean... I read somewhere he, that he won, he won like Young Drummer of the Year in 2014 or something like that. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he's remarkable. He's, what's his list? Uh, Morgan Simpson. Yeah, he's Morgan Simpson. There you go. And he's, he's a really, really, really good drummer. You know, he, think, uh, go on, carry on. He sort of gives him that edge, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. He's, he's I'd, I'd have to say he's a um, star player in it, really, isn't it? You know, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I sent you that interview that uh, I read with him the other night. And mm -hmm. so the the guitarist, well, well, you know, the guitarist and the guy that does the majority of the vocals, a guy called Geordie Greep. And it was yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. He was saying that him and the drummer, Morgan Simpson, they grew up in um, playing in church bands. Mm. 
um, doing like that kind of gospel thing. I'm not sure if he's American or English. I don't really know, but I'm, I'm they're, definitely... they're English. They went to the Brit school. Yeah, yeah, but I, uh, yeah, I, I don't really. No, know I don't know where he's from. I don't, I yeah, don't yeah. Know where I'm guessing they weren't playing "Come By Art," but it's interesting, isn't it? Because there's, a, there's, a, you know, well, those gospel players are amazing, aren't they? The yeah, yeah. special gospel drummers, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So I'm, I'm guessing some of that comes from there. But I, I, I guess John L. The first track on it, um, that track slow. Um, slow is my favourite one on it. Yeah, um, but I like ascending forth. I like the middle bit where those ascending chords come in. It's like whoa, yeah. There's something were you going getting, on here, you know? Were you getting like just? I mean, heavy King Crimson, heavy Crimson, Mad Vishnu vibes. Yeah, mid- Blue era. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, a lot of that. Um, There's a very Mad Vishnu chord sequence, and it's got um, a lot of this just got that sort of. One of the problems I've got with so called progressive bands is they what they do is basically they rip off different eras of progressive music yes you know, some, some of them will rip off Marillion some will rip off with it bites or some of them will rip yeah. off King Crimson or and it, but it's like oh it's progressive it's not progressive yeah but what yeah. they what this guy these guys do is got the attitude of King Crimson the attitude of Talking Heads and the attitude of you know the the those guys of bringing in um juxtaposition of influences um and so there's almost you know um what's the you know there's american sort of jazz rock bands that are around at the moment as well so somewhere between sort of a new wavy thing and um you know there's there's definitely a muso element to it isn't there yeah but it's i mean you've got bands like you know snarky puppy and things like that snarky puppy and yeah yeah like that. Who, who are phenomenal musicians and you know some of their compositions were amazing but they they don't have there's no there's no punk edge is there no and these guys are quite i mean so but one of the interesting things, they are incredible musicians. I mean, I listened to their cover of 21st Century Schizoid Man, The King Crimson. <laughs> that's really good. You'd be that, but they nailed it, right? and that section in the middle is really hard to play. Yeah. That, that middle section to it, I mean, it's just, you know. Um, and they did a medley of Psycho Killer and Roxanne uh, by Talking Heads and the Police. And the way they, you know, there's some really intelligent arranging going on. I mean, these they're, they're very, very musically adept. They sound like they're... Yeah. Um, very trained musicians to me there's um there's a track on the album one of the other ones i really liked it was called diamond stuff it's the one that sh- it just starts off with like um like like a single note um with like the you know mm. the the chords kind of move around it um really simplistic um it's also i think it's the the only there's, there's two two on the album where the the bass player sings he's the guy who mm. sings on slow uh slowly and um this one as well i'm just checking uh make sure i haven't made that up uh um and i really like his voice he's got this kind of like quite sort of ominous whispered thing going on mm. um but yeah that one um there's a lot of stuff going on in it and it's and a lot of it isn't okay, okay. as you were saying like a, a lot of you know progressive bands or sort of muso bands it's more about like how many different things how many different parts can we get mm. and what i think these guys have been quite intelligent about is the layering of sounds mm. so on that track in particular i recommend checking out it's really quite simple but there's a lot of different layers sometimes playing exactly the same thing so it gets to the point where it's like it's almost orchestral you know what i mean it's like these all yeah. these things building but it's not and here's another line and here's another line over the top of it and here's a harmony you know what i mean it's just all moving towards the same point yes yeah, it's probably the most exciting thing i've heard for a while um just because there's there's stuff now that I didn't see that coming, you know. What I mean, it's like it's sort of um, it's you know, it's, it's easy to um, most most stuff I find quite predict. Yeah, I can work even if it's quite avant. I can quite I can see where it's coming from. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this uh, just seems quite really original to me. I think it's nice to see. It's incredible to see something that's so so sort of out there, proggy, weird, um, How- brave. It yeah, yeah. Well in the mainstream as well. I mean. You know, I was talking to Michael Woodman from um, Thumper Monkey the other week, and his stuff's quite sort of out there, sort of um, a bit, um, Scott Walker sort of thing. Yeah. But it's not a million miles away from what these guys You know doing. what? Yeah, listening listening to it today, there was a couple of bits where I thought that's I, – I could totally, you know, the production's quite different, but but you could see that, you know, it's definitely in the same wheelhouse. The same, I, I, you know, some of the little riffs and stuff, I was hearing like, a, you know, like Knife World you know mm, yeah what, it's not it's not that far off is it no no but apparently there's um they used to play a lot of the windmill in brixton yeah which is the old, it's been like the sort of underground sort of venue for a few years now isn't it 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and also very, uh, apparently very improvisational in their live shows up to recent times where apparently they've become a bit more focused. Because uh, yeah, uh, yeah. again, I read the, the interview with the guy and the guy was saying, I mean, we've had some of this over the, you know, the, the many, many years we've been playing together where it's great fun to improvise live, but there was a mm. point where you, you kind of like, I don't know, you, you get used to improvising live and you find yourself leaning yeah, back on the crazy, same crazy. tricks. Yeah, your vocabulary gets in there, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's quite hard to sort of bring new things in without playing with new musicians or something like that, you know. When, when I used to do solo gigs with acoustic guitar and the loop pedal and that, um, I, I found that I just became this sort of vocabulary of, you know, sort of things I knew that worked. Yeah. And, uh, and it was almost exciting when something went wrong because it was almost, you know, like, oh, you know, this is exciting because it's something different, you know what I mean? Yeah, I fair think enough. It's the same with any improvising musicians. Became, you sort of develop a vocabulary and you have to try and transcend that. Yeah. But um, one of the things I'd say with this album as well, I mean, how long must it took to learn the arrangements on this? And the arrangements oh, are really complex, aren't they? They, they are, but the, I'd have to say they are, but they're quite focused. They are, but what I'm saying is there's like stuff where, um, so they tend to um, go to like, like the find the good bits. One of the yeah. good things that sort of bands in this sort of genre, a lot of time that they do, they, they'll miss the good bits. Yeah, yeah. So they'll, sort of, they'll play around all the different sort of sections, but they won't. And they, But these guys seem really good at finding the, the really good parts and really emphasising them. Very um, much so. Very much so. So, you know, I, I really want to see them live. I'd like to see how, if they can pull it off, you know. But it's, it, this it kind of reminds me, like, weirdly, it kind of reminds me of like the first time I heard the Block Party album. Uh, the first Block mm. Party album, because that, that was really exciting at the time, you know what I mean? It was like a, so, something that's kind of somewhere between indie rock and something a little bit more yes. interesting and, and brave, you know what I mean? I, one thing as well that came across on this, and it's a credit to the production and obviously like the, com the composition and stuff as well, but it reminded me, you know, we've had conversations in the past about um, Cardiacs and mm. how with Tim Smith, like, you know, the, the genius of Tim Smith always seemed to be like that he wasn't trying to be, you know, to yeah, write just, unusual. It's, so true, it's just it? that's yeah. what he did, you know. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's the good stuff, isn't it? They're yeah, exactly. Sorry, is it? And I'm not comparing these guys to Cardiacs or, you know, saying they sound like him at all or anything like that. But what I'm saying is that it felt it's got, yeah, unforced. It's like a, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's very, that's that joy of music and musical discovery, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so really, um, really sort of, you know, another, another yeah, yeah. thing that's, 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 that's apparent there. It feels joyful. And no, it's, it's just really good to see there's a band, you know, at least one band coming through that's doing something that's really interesting. Like, I posted on my Twitter feed the other day, um, you know, what were the, what were the, how ex do you think that the you know the prog fans will be excited about this? And um, I think some 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 people really were, yeah. And some and, and some people weren't. You know, were just like I don't get it at all. Which is and bizarre, like, isn't it? Because you'd think there's so many the touchstones there. It's, it's so it's so you know. And the other the other touchstone I'd say is Primus as well. You know, yeah, uh, when he does the spoken word parts. Yeah, it's really Primus. It's very it? Tommy the Cat, isn't it? But I, I don't know if they, I think it's one of those things, a bit like when Radiohead came out with OK Computer in that, um, like OK Computer is a progressive rock album to an extent. Yeah. But it was, it, it was, it was a progressive album that was sort of reversed engineered. So they weren't listening to Genesis and this came out. It was that they were listening to a lot of the similar influences. So they had classical music juxtaposed with rock music. Right. Um, and that came out. So they kind of reversed engineered um, prog. Uh, yes. Made OK Computer. So this is a bit, it's kind of, it sounds a bit like Primus, but I think they're just kind of coming from, you know, Primus influences like King Crimson and, and XTC and stuff like that. Yeah. They're coming from a similar sort of, um, uh, sort of set of juxtaposition of influences, aren't they? So Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, one thing as well, I, you know, I went old school because obviously, you know, nobody reads lyrics anymore because, you know, you're listening on online or whatever it might be. Mm. Um, uh, the lyrics are really good. <laughs> they're really good. They're, they're, I'm they're obtuse. I've not made any attention to them at all. Yeah, there's, they're obtuse, but um, they're not. Um, they didn't make me cringe. Um, they had really humour, and yeah, they're, they're just really well, kind of well written. You know, some of the things I'm always ad, ad, you know, I always admire people who can say things that I would, you know, normally just think, oh my god, that sounds really, you know, 
mm. really cringy, and it's then just really they just get away with it. It's like Carves. Carves writes good words, doesn't he? Carves writes excellent words. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah, really good and words. Yeah, like Tom York. He, there's not. There's only so many people who write words that you sort of think, oh, you know what I mean? It's like a lot, a lot of bands. I listen to the lyrics. It's like, oh, it, normally when I get the lyrics here, it, it makes it it makes it less enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, because I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. I was just I was just interested to see like you know the the style of the music what they're what they're talking about over the top mm. of it and you know um, from what I can tell you know some of them just seem to be like you know just stories some of them are you know about little things in particular what you know whether it is you know this is all an analogy for you know yeah uh, you know I mean I, I, I it's not worried for Genghis hear, Khan is it No I mean I can definitely hear. Um, you know, uh, Man Vishnu, King Crimson, I can definitely hear XTC, I can hear, but I can't quite put my finger on when they're coming from. And that's really good. That's really, that really is exciting for me to hear something and not get to go, you know, I, I, it's a juxtaposition of the influences, but it doesn't sound like this yeah. section of King Crimson welded onto this section of Man Vishnu, you know, or, yeah. And it's done it. And you also, you know, the start, like the second track that, um, oh, the, the Marlene Dietrich. The Scott Walker one, yeah, and it's like yeah. you know that, that's got a real floaty thing, which is which is really different. So, I, yeah, no, I, I really enjoyed this. You know, I, I mean, I've heard it three times now. Yeah, and I'll probably be saying, you know, a bit like the Deaf Heaven album. I've got utterly obsessed with it. <laughs> um, I'll probably do the you know the same sort of thing with do this as well, just because there's a lot going on. And um, I, I enjoyed taking it in one sitting as well. Yeah, well, there's enough going this because it doesn't all sound the same, does it? Yeah, it's really, yeah, exactly. So much going on, is it? Yeah, because one of the problems with, with a lot of albums is like, you know, if you um, you listen to it all the way through, and it's, it's one of the problems with the sort of the current thing is like, if you make an album, you, you know, there's a pressure to make it, all the songs the same because algorithmically that's what people tend to want. Yeah. But I, I really like that it's quite varied and, you know, there's lots of interesting things going on there. Yeah, I really I like, like the violin the, on it as well. The violin. Yeah, really I mean, cool. yeah that, I mean that, that kind of helped with the sort of Mavishnu kind Mavishnu. of uh, violin. But the chord progressions are very Mavishnu, yeah. aren't they? But they're not Mavishnu rip-off progressions. There was, I mean, they're like, there's a chord progression halfway through the last song. Yeah. I was like, that feels like Mavishnu, but it's not a Mavishnu rip. It's got a similar sort of ascending sort of feel. Or the middle of um, Starless sort of feel, but that's, yeah, it's yeah. not a rip. It's not. It's not. Doesn't sound like. It. Yeah, there's, it. It sounds like it's an influence, it's, and exactly as you said earlier, it's really interesting what you said earlier that so many bands. I mean, to be honest with you, you know, we've done it before, where you know, yeah, um, yeah. it says, you know, we say it's an influence, but what we actually mean is like it's pretty much like we're, pretty much, we're yeah, doing we, it in we person. Do it, and then we, you know, um, <laughs> and, you know, that, but I think that's you know a very common thing, isn't it? And that's but these guys sound like they've. Um, spent a lot of time playing together and have managed to sort of transcend their influences, which is a really yeah. cool thing, I think. So um, I thought it's interesting as well that it's kind of like the Beach Boys. When people say like, uh, you know, I like the Beach Boys, where, you know, which Beach Boys do you like? Because there's, there's all these different things. Yeah, yeah. And I think as well, um, when people say Mount Vishnu, I think most of the time people are talking about the first couple of albums, you know, the yeah, I mean, A lot of it's the, it's the when, when people think about Vision, they think of the Widdley stuff, don't they? But I'm thinking the chord progressions. Lot yes, that's exactly. And the, on this album, there was some, it was, you know, I'm not saying with like the huge orchestral thing, but, you know, Apocalypse, yeah, uh, Visions of the Emerald Beyond kind of era. Definitely got that sort of, you know, that ascending chord sequence thing going. It's, it's, it's yeah. nice to hear. Um, because a lot of the time people don't really get what the, a lot of the time people think, oh yeah, we, we, we're going to do something in the style of Crimson or my Vision and then they just play really fast. Yeah, it's totally not what it's about. It was about this wonderful sort of spiritual uplifting music thing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's just, um, that, that wasn't it. Yeah. You know, I, I did a video with, with um, Sid Smith and we were talking about there was, there was more to this than, than just Widdle. There was, there was, it was, yeah, the, huge. It was the, yeah, yeah. And you know, there was, there was this sort of spiritual ascending thing, but yeah. Um, uh, has that covered it? Do you think Kev? I think so. Yeah. I mean, I, I recommend, um, I will, I'm going to, you know, definitely be listening, um, more, uh, to this one. I really enjoyed it. I really, I really like the production. I found it, you know, even with some of the stuff that's like, you know, really dissonant, but the production mm. is just, you know, really welcoming. <laughs> Have you listened to the, um, KXP sessions? There's a few sessions online. And yeah. It's, it's, that's that's it's, cool uh, as well. That drummer's remarkable. He's a remarkable drummer. I mean, yeah, just, 
It's a phenomenal drummer. And, um, you know, you, you can see that, I think there's one video of where the, 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 the guitar is changing a string and they're jamming. Right, yeah. And, um, you know, there's, there's something going on with this, this drummer guy. I mean, it's, 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 you know, this is a different different thing. You know what I mean? This is hey, a, here's, a, here's a question for you, because I know they're, they've, you know, their their first album, they were nominated for a Mercury Prize. They got a lot of hype, you know. Yeah, and, I didn't you know, really, I didn't really yeah. hear it. Yeah. But, um, you know, you've got a song like John L, which is by, you know, any any remotely mainstream standards, even by indie standards, is pretty out there, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, and and yet it's got um you know on on six music admittedly but it's got daytime playlisting and that's got to be good for that's got to be good for everyone isn't it? In the yeah movie. totally yeah I mean I don't know what, what how how are they getting away with this <laughs> it's what I want to know. Well, they're signed to Rough Trade don't they so they 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 are they're not signed to Inside Out so yeah if they were signed to you know Proggy at Prog label I mean they'd be you know no one would be uh, with it. They, they, someone's putting some a push into it because I think there's a few things going on here that they aren't just the you know the phenomenal chord progressions in the songwriting, but they've also got a really good singer, a real a proper singer. You know what I mean? Yeah, I like and, and Michael interesting. Michael Woodman from Monkey is also a really good singer, actually. But um, yes, these guys have got they've got a really really good singer and they've got a really good drummer and they're really good live. Yeah, and they're young. Yeah. They're really young. You know what yes. I mean? They're younger than anyone in the scene of the sort of avant prog scene. You know, because there's no one that age is. I mean, they're 21 years old. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. I've noticed yeah, as well they really managed to um, sidestep the the math rock thing as well because I know that was a, a, a title that was hanging around them for a little while. But they've they definitely got a bit of you know the slint sort of thing going, haven't they? Yeah, but, those, it, but again, those, it's like. like those empty sort of where they got the more minimalist range arrangements and stuff. So it's got a slinty sort of feel. You yeah. Know what I mean, but it's, I, it's mean, I don't know what they, what they listen to. I mean, yeah, yeah. it sounds to me like Mavish, New King Crimson, Slint, XTC, uh, early XTC, you know, that kind of, all that stuff. But I do think it's yeah. interesting, isn't it? That if something's presented in the right way, you know, you could, you can present something that's really challenging musically to the public. And the public are fine with it. You know, it's the same, yeah. Like, I, I remember hearing um, Paranoid Android on the radio in the 90s. And yeah. people were okay with that because it was Radiohead and everyone liked Radiohead. Yeah, I mean, you know, Mad Vishnu yeah, talking was, with Aerosmith, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think the general public uh, will accept things because they enjoy hear people, in, well, they, what do I know? But people tend to enjoy hearing really good musicians play. Yes. You know what I mean? Whether that's in gospel, you know, like look at those gospel drummers now. I mean, the, yeah, the gospel music, you know, and there's, you know, a lot, a lot of the metal bands as well. The, the level of musicianship, so, but this doesn't feel like total muso to me. This sounds that like, sounds like they're using their ability. It's not, it's not, you know, uh, fusion noodling. It's, it's, they no. sounds like they're they've got they've got ideas and they're using their chops to, 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 to make those ideas come across, aren't they? So absolutely, man. Well, it's a th- it's a thumbs up from me. Thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs I'm up. pretty sure the word the world has been waiting to hear <laughs> what Matt and Kev from the Fizz. Oh yeah, God, yeah. I mean, you know, thank goodness, look. thank goodness that's um that's another one ticked off. <laughs> well, are we done, mate? I think so. Yeah. So yeah, recommended Black Midi Cavalcade. Go and check it out. Uh, available at all places where music is available. Um, nice one, mate. See you later, man. See you later.